Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x quantity squared minus f of x, f of negative x quantity squared is equal to 4x. And we're going to be solving for f of x. So with functional equations you can replace x with certain values, you can kind of test it for, you know, the domain, the range, the continuity and all that stuff. But this type of function, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to assume that f of x is a polynomial. So I'd like to write it this way. f of x can be written as, if f of x is a polynomial, it can be written as a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared dot 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 all the way up to a n x to the power n. So the degree of this polynomial is going to be n in this case. So then I'd like to substitute this into the equation, but I will also need to find out f of negative x, which can be found by replacing x with negative x. That's going to give me a0 minus a1x plus a2x squared. Notice that the terms with even powers are going to be positive still, and the other ones are going to be even. Uh, the other is going to be negative. We don't know what n is in this case, so that's why we're just going to put, put the three dots there. Now, before I substitute all of this into my expression, I'd like to factor this because this is a difference of two squares, right? So we can go ahead and factor it and write it as f of x plus f of negative x, and which is, uh, this is a good thing because it's going to help us simplify. Imagine you were trying to square this po polynomial. It's going to be just easier that way. So I can just factor from difference of two squares. So this is what I get, right? a squared minus b squared can be factored as a plus b, a minus b. Now, since I know I have an expression for f of x, I can just go ahead and substitute it, but let's go ahead and do the following. Let's calculate f of x plus f of negative x. Let's see what happens with that. When you add these two things, notice that the terms with odd powers are going to disappear, they're going to cancel out, you're going to get the even powers with the two in front of them. So you're going to be getting something like this, 2a0, 2a2x squared, 2a4x to the fourth, dot, dot, dot. And then for the difference, you're going to be getting something, something similar, but with odd powers. So it's going to look like the following. If you subtract these two expressions, then you're going to be getting the, the, the even terms are going to cancel out. So you're going to be getting a1x plus a1x, which is two times that. So it's going to be 2a1x plus 2a3x cubed plus 2a5x to the fifth power, so on and so forth. So those are my two expressions, and obviously I'm supposed to multiply them and set them equal to 4x. But note that one thing you can do here will definitely simplify the process. You can factor out some expressions, right? There are common factors. So for the first one, for the sum, I can just go ahead and take out a 2. So I'll be having something like this, 2 times the quantity a0 plus a2x squared plus a4x to the fourth power, dot, dot, dot. And then for the difference, notice that here and here, for example, the common factor is going to be 2x. So instead of taking out a 2 only, I can take out 2x. And then inside, I should have a1 plus, we got to be careful here because Notice that the odd powers go with the odd coefficients, but this time, since you take out an x, you're going to have to pair them with even coefficients. So a3 would go with x, x squared, and then a5 is going to go with x to the fourth power, and so on and so forth. And this product is going to equal 4x. Okay, now, notice that if you multiply 2 times 2x, you get 4x. So we can cancel that out like this, and we end up with 1 on the right-hand side. So what this tells us is basically we get a0 plus a2x squared plus a4x to the fourth power plus dot 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 multiplied by a1, of course the 2 cancels out 2, plus a3x cubed plus a5x to the fourth plus dot 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 is equal to 1. Okay, now Think about this. These are both polynomials and we're multiplying them, but we're just getting a constant. Is that possible? For all x values, obviously, this is only going to be possible. This is only going to be possible if the product of the constants is 1 and everything else becomes 0. So, for example, if you multiply a2x squared with 
A1, you should be getting something like A1, A2, X squared, right? Okay, are you getting any other X squared from here? No, because what happens is you only have the even powers on one side and the odd, odds on the other, so you can never get X squared in another way. And the same thing goes for X to the fourth power. By the way, this should be um, an X squared, not an X to the third. I should correct that real quick. Okay, here we go. That's an X squared because we have even powers. Well, I, I, I think I should make a correction here. So yes, definitely. We do have even powers on both sides. So you can get A1, A2, X squared. And then you could also get from A0, A3, X squared. Okay, there we go. So this is going to be the coefficient of X squared. But notice that it has to be 0 because we don't have X squared here. That means that this whole thing is going to be 0. And that's true for all kinds of products and sums you can get from here. This basically means that all the coefficients have to be 0 except for A0 and A1. And their product needs to equal 1. So from here, basically, we're getting something like this. A0 times A1 is equal to 1. And then everything else like A2, A3, A4, dot, 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 has to equal 0. Okay, now what is that supposed to mean? Well, we assumed at the beginning that our expression is a polynomial, right? In which form? Let's write it again. We said that f of x is going to be in this form a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus dot, dot, dot. Okay, all the way up to an x to the nth power because this is a finite polynomial, right? But notice that everything else besides these disappears. So that means that my polynomial is a linear one right? And I can write it like this, f of x is equal to a0 plus a1x. But we also have a relationship between a0 and a1. So let's just go ahead and use that relationship to write this in a nicer way. So how can we do that? Well, if you just assume that your a0 is a constant like c, and c is a good constant, right? We use it with integrals. And if we don't, we get into trouble, right? So from here, we basically get that a1 is 1 over c. So it allows you to write both coefficients in terms of a third variable, which is a primary in this case, so that we can write f of x in this form. So f of x that satisfies this equation, this functional equation, can be written as c plus 1 over cx. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Let's talk about this a little bit. Obviously, c cannot equal 0 in this case, otherwise it's going to be undefined. Otherwise, it's good. So what is that supposed to mean? For example, think about some particular values of c. What happens if c is equal to 1? Well, if c is equal to 1, then you get f of x is equal to x plus 1. Then is, does this satisfy the equation? Absolutely. Remember, we talked about this a lot in our videos. We said that we have a really famous identity, especially with, I think, um, what is that called? Geometry puzzles. If you look at this difference, you're, gonna be get, you're always going to be getting something like 4x, right? So that works. Well, what if c is equal to 1 third, right? Then you're going to be getting something like f of x is equal to 1 third plus 3x. Again, when you substitute, it's going to satisfy the functional equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Tomorrow, I'll see you with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.